if you're not using DTP, this solution will be completely useless looking at those elements that may be having a static IP address. So at the end of the day, when, you know, when I look at companies, then some of them may have uh, an address space that this is an address space which uh, gets um, uh, DTP address, but on the same subnet, they may have another address space which might be reserved for servers or other users which have a static IP address and nobody will be able to understand that they're there on the network. So basically, the easiest form of bypassing this solution is kind of, uh, well, I don't want to use the word lame, but hey, I said it, um, is just to assign a static IP address to, uh, to the uh, machine and basically um, you're off to go. Um, the problem also with uh, different companies is that part of the networks uh, will be shared by servers and heart and uh, desktop, so part of the network will be uh, DTP based, part of the network will not be usually. The people that need to know about it knows about it. So if I have someone which uh, is a bit familiar with the IT network, he can easily assign himself an IP address that uh, will not be blocked. Um, this type of solution must have uh, an agent software because without an agent software it has no way to assess the security, security of the uh, element that it is checking. Um, also, the detection of the um, uh, element is only done at uh, layer three. It means that uh, um, the fact is, is that if I am on the network, I have all my local subnet I can access. So at the end of the day, if I would like to compromise someone and use, his, use that someone as a platform to access other, other parts of the network, I can do that easily. Because there's nothing on my local subnet that would prevent me from uh, directly accessing that particular subnet. Also, if the subnet, the broadcast domain itself, will contain more than um, one subnet, then that's a whole new ball game. That's a big, uh, big problem because uh, still, although other IP addresses which I may not be uh, part of or belong to uh, maybe on the uh, broadcast domain, I'll still be able to send them traffic and to get them back through the router because I'm, I will be sending them the traffic directly and not through the router. So that's also a big no-no. So basically we have a, a very nice local subnet which can be infected with viruses and worms. Um, a local subnet that can be attacked and some elements can be used as an access proxy to access other, other parts of the network that uh, attackers do not have access to. Um, and also quarantine is usually based on uh, giving the uh, element an IP address which belongs to a certain subnet. I also quarantine the, uh, the element to uh, a certain uh, subnet using ACLs on routers, again, easily bypassed. Another, uh, another main problem is that uh, users may access the network from uh, different parts of the network and not all of these parts would have DTP enabled. Again, if you know where you need to connect your machine, you can connect your machine and you have access. Um, other problems is the uh, lack of awareness for uh, masquerading devices. Basically, if I would like to provide connectivity for another device to another device through network access, through network address translation, then it is fine, no problem. There is no knowledge, especially when I'm doing that in, um, in a, in a non-bridged -bridge, uh, manner. These elements will not be found and you can connect whatever you would like to the network and here you go, you have access to the network. Exceptions, I'll talk about that in a, in a, in a second. Um, and also, just think about it, there is no real user authentication here because the user is not authenticated to nothing. I come with my machine, I have the appropriate agent, I have the appropriate patches. Well, technically speaking, we'll talk about that later. And basically, I have the information that would allow me to connect to the network, but my identity is not proven. I do not, the, uh, basically the solution does not know what is my identity. So, sure, my uh, element complies with whatever needs to be done, but still, my identity has not been proven yet. Um, this is, a, this is a quote I found uh, with, with a document called Networks, Network Access Control Technologies and Saigit Compliance on Contact by Saigit, now Symantec. And I guess you can read it for yourself, but since it's fun, um, systems without agents can be granted network access two ways. First, a non-Windows exception can be made that exempts non-Windows clients from the NAC process. Second, a MAC address-based exemption list can be built. 
That's great. So basically, if I have a problematic element, I'll just, I'll just uh, put uh, an exception list. I'll put it there. I'll allow it access. So all someone needs to know who are those elements that uh, have the R on the exception list, understand locally what are their MAC address and IP address. That's easily done. And basically uh, abuse that and spoof that in order to get access when they are not there or when you disconnect these elements. And this is from, of course, the vendor's document. Yeah. Um, I, I need to say that uh, Microsoft uh, Network Access Protection does have uh, DHCP, but they do state in their documentation, and this is something new to Microsoft, that this is the worst ever way to, uh, to do Network Access Protection. So I have a, I have a, I have a quote for them, from them uh, later in the presentation saying that, uh, well, it's not security. We just want to make sure that uh, the element that connects to the network has the right patches. Uh, so basically, any solution, you'll see that most of the solutions out there today, they do DHCP-based, they do 802.1x, they do other things, but it, it's basically whoever does um, DHCP proxy, it's really not such a good thing to do. But we will touch 802.1x later, and you'll see that uh, 802.1x is also something that uh, if you don't do it correctly or in, in many ways, you can also uh, have some, uh, some fun there. Um, it's fun because I saw someone, someone from one of the uh, network access control systems uh, vendors uh, wrote in his blog that, uh, uh, sure, their customers ask them frequently regarding the problem of assigning um, a static IP address and bypassing the solution. But since they're not able and do not have the money or the will to deploy 802.1x, then they'll still go and implement uh, uh, the uh, DHCP proxy, and it's okay with them. Well, you can judge yourself if it's okay or not. I don't think it's okay. So another, uh, another funny solution, in my opinion, is the, uh, I call it the DHCP in a box. Um, basically, it's um, another DHCP replacement uh, that at the end of the day uh, provides uh, DHCP uh, addresses to the network. And since it does so, it basically uses this ability in order to um, authenticate the user according to his username and password on the network um, and only after the authentication of that particular uh, user it allows him access to the network. So basically the solution components are not, well, solution components include the DCP replacement box, the uh, an authentication portal which can be on the DCP uh, box itself and of course your regular Active Directory or wherever you put your usernames and passwords. It may also uh, have additional servers, um, patch management, vulnerability management, and others that can also be attached to the solution. But the uh, exchange of information looks like this. Basically, um, an element comes to the network, requests a DHCP address, um, gets another quarantine IP address with the DNS server uh, assigned to the DHCP box itself. Um, so here I do, I would like to go someplace, I do a DNS resolution, I get the IP address of the uh, DHCP box, I go to the DHCP box, I have, um, uh, of course, HTTPS, um, user, uh, using HTTPS, I have an um, authentication form, I put my username and password, it's been uh, cross-referenced to my Active Directory or wherever I, uh, other place the uh, information is at. And if the information is correct, then I'm granted access to the network and everything is fine and everybody are happy. That's one, one of the things. Um, during the uh, course of this process, uh, uh, the, uh, the solution may or may not decide to launch additional tests uh, on the, um, on the um, element that um, comes onto the network. Uh, basically, um, this test may include a vulnerability assessment or a patch management solution trying to assess the security of that particular element. And we'll relate to that in a second. Theoretically, it sounds like a good solution, you know. Oh yeah, I'll authenticate all the users. I know all the users because they are in my database. Uh, it's basically operating system independent because, hey, my, uh, my Mac users and my um, Linux users and my Windows users, they all can uh, do this all together. All in all, this is a very bad solution. 
Um, I wouldn't recommend it. Very, well, if someone knows how to play with this, it's uh, easily bypassed the same. All the same problems that uh, we talked about with the uh, DTP proxy, proxy also applies, but the biggest problem here is that if you, if you do not have a client software on the element that you're trying to assess its security, then you do not have the ability to really know what's the security posture of that element. So if, I'm, if I would like to have a vulnerability scanner to scan a certain element so I can understand if it is vulnerable to something, well, you know what? I can't assess its security because there are some information that I need to take from the element itself directly and not from saying, okay, this element does not have any uh, open services. Well, you can't actually scan for all of them as well. And that's enough for me to say this element should or should not be on my network. The other problem here is that it is really, really trivial to bypass this solution and steal your credentials. Um, you all know what rogue DTP server is because some of you, when uh, you um, are on your network, there are sometimes uh, guys, especially from uh, QA or R&D, that installs Linux, and they say, oh, DTP server, yes, you're on, install that. Uh, who cares? So we have another rogue DTP server on that network, and whoever answers you, or basically the answers that the, the first answer that you get, this is the answer that you usually will trust. So basically what needs to be done here, just to put another DTP server on the on the network and do the same stuff as the DTP in a box that does. I uh, will give you the IP address of the DNS as my address. I will put you, I'll give you a nice IP address that you can use and you'll redirect your traffic to me and I'll get your credentials, say, say thank you and wait for the time that you will be disconnected from the network and it'll abuse your credentials. Easy. Nothing new with that. Questions? Another breed of uh, solutions is the uh, uh, broadcast listeners. Uh, broadcast listeners is a good name for um, basically an agent software that is installed per subnet and basically listens to uh, broadcast traffic in order to catch those elements that may or may not, of course, that uh, um, will be um, on that particular network. It uh, looks at uh, different, um, <coughs> different packets, uh, mostly looking to have uh, ARP requests, uh, NetBIOS, um, DTP request and whatever it broadcasts to the network in order to uh, detect the elements. So with, uh, I'm now going to use the term managed and unmanaged. Basically managed is, um, is an element that uh, has a, a client software by the vendor that is installed on it that allows it to assess the security and unmanaged element is a basically, well, you get the understanding. Uh, so basically if I have a, a client software on the uh, element that tries to connect to the network, the uh, the element broadcasts its traffic. The um, the agent on the um, on the software catches the well, understands that uh, this element is now trying to get to the network. Communicates with the uh, broadcast listener. Basically, the uh, um, situation or the uh, posture of the uh, security on that particular element is uh, being assessed. If it needs to be remediated, it, it is. If not, it is uh, assigned the IP address and it's all good. Who can tell me, looking at this particular scenario, what's, what's bad in this scenario? This is an unmanaged element, and it accesses the network, and what's, what's, what's the problem with this scenario? Of course, it's, resu it's assuming that I'm there, right? Assuming that I will hand the broadcasting traffic to the network, assume that I will use that, and also assumes that